welcome to the grid. And surprise, I'm Scott Kelby. Actually, <laughs> I am not Scott Kelby. Um, Scott is right now live on stage in Arlington. He's doing his latest, and in fact, his last uh, concert appearance this year. He's doing his last uh, live performance this year um, on stage. And so that's happening right now. He's actually doing a seminar all day today in Texas. So my name is Larry Becker. I am filling in for my buddy Scott this week. And we have as my special guest, Kevin LaRue. And Kevin and I have known each other for a lot of years More than and count. through the industry. So what we're going to talk about today is the photography industry, the photo retouching mm -hmm. industry, because you've been intimately involved in photo retouching from the manufacturer side, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. creator side. That's right. And I've seen you at every trade show on the planet that, that is associated with it back in the earliest days with Photoshop World. So we'll talk a, a bit about that. We wanna talk about what we've seen happen over the years in the industry, but we also wanna talk about your company and the great software you guys produce. Uh, MacFun is an awesome company, and I need to shut up and just say, welcome Kevin LaRue. <laughs> well, thanks Larry. <laughs> thanks for coming in and yeah. flying in, and uh, I'm sorry we don't have any cold weather for you here. Well, I, I came, uh, it was 11 degrees when I drove up to the, the, the airport in Columbus today. So that's home for you, Columbus? No, no, I actually live in San Diego. But okay. I was, uh, well, I'll, San Diego's not too yeah, bad. Not I too love bad. San Diego. It's a dry heat out there. It <laughs> seems to be a wet heat out here. <laughs> it's, Florida <laughs> is a good it? place to be. So I want to invite you guys to join in the conversation. So if you want to talk about the industry, where you see it going, coming from or going, um, what kinds of things you've experienced as well, because that's going to be our kind of rough topic. But we want to talk about a lot of different things. So. Um, I want to welcome you guys aboard, and uh, I want to ask a favor, and that is that that you please don't tell Scott how horrible I did <laughs> when I sat in for him here on the grid this week, so that I'm allowed to come back at least as a guest or something sometime in the future. But uh, but I do want to talk about that. We've got giveaways. We've got cool announcements. Uh, just amazing stuff going on, and some of this stuff you guys already know about, especially if you are a uh, Kelby One annual member. There's some really neat stuff going on, and I, I'm seeing these things showing up in my email. So I want to talk to you uh, about that stuff a little bit. Looks like we're already getting some wow. greetings. Hello from Shelter Dog Photography in Kentucky. Uh, I'm sure that is a derivative of Kentucky. <laughs> uh, and we're saying hi from Hanover, Germany. Very good. I am pleased that you are more multilingual than I am. Guten Abend. <laughs> I speak only English and very poorly at that. Um, so welcome aboard, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. So uh, Kevin, let's let's talk a little bit about um, your background. I've been at every single Photoshop World ever, and then I started going to other trade shows. But I think you and I met at a Photoshop World yeah, years ago. I, I think we did. Probably, I want to say back in 2007 or 2008. And you were not, there was no Mac Fun back then. I mean, there was uh, fun with Macintosh. Well, computers, sure, but, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Mac Fun actually got its start in 2008. Okay. Uh, a couple of video game developers <laughs> decided that the iPhone was going to be a good uh, opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, Turned so out did, to be okay. Did some mobile apps for a while, but, but then in 2010, Really, uh, really shifted over to the the Mac desktop side uh -huh. of the house, and uh, but actually, to be honest with you, my career goes back uh, well farther than I like to admit. <laughs> um, I, I learned how to use one of these things on a, on an old Mac Lisa, if you remember. Oh that, yeah, that thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I got a job uh, with one of the early uh, indie Mac developers, a uh -huh. company called Silicon Beach at the time. Okay. And in fact, I think we had one of the first uh, photography software products uh, out there. It was a, a product called Digital Darkroom. I use Digital Darkroom. <laughs> I love Digital Darkroom. It was awesome. Yeah. It was it was actually don't tell Adobe I said this, but Digital Darkroom was better than Photoshop in the earliest days for black and white photography. Yeah, it predated so Photoshop that was awesome. by at least a year. Yeah. And, and in fact, um, uh, I, re I remember when the Knoll brothers came to Silicon Beach. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they were shopping Photoshop around, <laughs> but they were certainly showing it. And, and our guys, of course, uh, were, hey, we're building our own photography software. Right. And uh, well, history is proven. Right. <laughs> Who's the wiser it, there? But, uh, Adobe, Adobe was 
first into the color space. Well, color they were. They were. We were very committed with that product at the time uh, it, to grayscale photography. That was right. all that was available. We had color tinting. Remember right. The, 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 the Max had a color monitor that you could hook to it, I think, in sure. 88 or so. Yeah, and I had yeah. one of those. <laughs> Uh, but it was a good time. It was a good time back then. I felt like it was it was a, a very early part of uh, of the Mac. Uh, obviously, the the Mac uh, arc here that we're well, that, that we're was living today. that was like leading edge though. Back in the day, digital mm -hmm. darkroom was absolutely leading edge, yeah. and um, uh, and then Photoshop. When Photoshop came on the scene with retouching color photos and digital darkroom couldn't retouch yeah. color photos we yeah. saw the world change yeah yeah and so photoshop became yeah. the industry leader it sure did and, and about that time um uh, the the company got acquired by aldous uh corporate i, the page I remember aldous yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, now later on aldous got acquired by adobe of and course is, and then we come full circle here but sure uh but yeah that's how that that well, kind of got started what so happened, i've been in the so what happened to you how, what was your path <laughs> through this Oh boy. Um, well, um, I, I was a product manager at Silicon Beach, and I was working on a product called SuperCard, which was a hypercard. I remember SuperCard. In fact, Jean I remember Louis Gasset hypercard. introduced our our, uh, our product at okay. our first press conference. Well, Aldous and Adobe didn't want it, so a few guys and I uh, bought SuperCard okay. from the company and the customer list, and then we ran that company for about four years. Sure. Uh, and that had a nice arc, <laughs> right, right? And then I licked my wounds at a at a big defense contractor, and and finally uh, I got back in the photo market uh, and the and the consumer software market about right. 2006, I think. And you joined? Well, I was with Nick Nick Software for a while, and that's where you yeah, and I met. That's where we met. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and Nick had some really cool products, and they still do. Yeah. Uh, and they got acquired by is it Google? Uh, Alphabet, Google, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, we got we got acquired by Google. Yeah. So um, with that, now obviously you can you can uh, go and get that software these days mm -hmm. for free. Yeah. And um, it, it it is what it is, you know. Yeah. It, it is uh, in our rearview mirror, I guess. Well, it's certainly in my rearview mirror. Uh, I mean, I'm delighted to be with MacFun. Uh, I got approached uh, by the guys in 2013 to, uh -huh. to help start the U.S. office and to kind of bring that perspective to the company. Uh, and it's been a, it's been a gas. I mean, we've we've continually released products. Sure. Uh, everybody's receptive to feedback. There's it checks your ego at the door kind of thing. That's nice. And it's a great environment. Um, now, the, the 10 hour uh, time difference between where the development and the head office is and, and the US is, you know, can sometimes be a pain, but sure. that's just typical communication stuff. Skype is our friend. Yeah, I can understand that. So um, I, I do want to talk about Mac Fun. I want to talk about your leading products now. Mm. What are people really excited about and stuff like that? I do want to say hi to a couple people, though. Oh, right. Um, Bruno says, I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Bruno. I really do appreciate that. Somebody is in Alaska right now. I would think that should oh, be that's illegal. Cold. <laughs> to be in Alaska at this time of year, it has got to be just crazy freezing. That's Joshua Vassar is there. And um, Pushbendra, um, I, I'm so sorry that I would uh, uh, butcher your name. So I believe it's Pushbendra. Um, hi from Toronto, Canada. Dennis uh, Whittem from Port Jersey, Port Jefferson, New Jersey, or New York, I'm sorry, Port Jefferson, New York. And uh, Cameron says, I'm just about to order components for a custom PC for photo and video. Bad idea. What do you think? Custom components. That's not my area of specialty, so I am mm. going to defer to you. Do you build any custom computers? Oh, I've computers? never built a computer in my life. Okay, wrong audience <laughs> or wrong, I'm a fan wrong of the experts systems. this week. Sorry, Cameron, I don't have good answers for you. Um, yeah, DIY Larry, thank nice. you, Michael, for saying that. Um, and the bomb squad is in the house. That's great. I'm glad to see you guys here. That's very cool. That is uh, a thing that a friend of mine, Keith yeah, B. Dixon, photographer, okay. his followers are the bomb squad. Oh, right on. And he <laughs> is the funniest guy, and he's a great uh, live broadcaster. Okay. And I met him first um, on Periscope and then at a Periscope meetup uh -huh. in uh, San Francisco. And uh, then I've seen him at shows and all kinds of different stuff. So Keith Dixon, Keith B. Dixon, great guy, and uh, he has his followers, the, uh, the, bomb, the bomb Squad. squad. That's yeah. Great. That's a so great let's handle. talk. Let's talk a little bit about um, what your lead and really new announcement is 
from Mac Fun. Yeah, I mean our latest uh, our, our latest software product is called Luminar. Yeah. And and Luminar is is designed to be an all-in-one photo editor. Uh, it's the it's uh, it's where we've taken everything that we've we've uh, developed and known and learned about to date, all that experience, and rolled it all into into one. Well, and that uh, kind of goes back a little bit. So th the way that the company kind of evolved, you had several individual applications that focused on a very uh, um, specific area of image retouching. Right. And so you have a, a collection of, and if you go to macfun.com, um, you can actually mm -hmm. see the collection of other applications, Tonality, Noiseless, Intensify, uh, right. Snap Heel Focus, and FX Pro Studio. Yeah. So those applications are kind of the thing that led to well, I, I would say that they inspired uh, Luminar. I mean, okay. we're, we're kind of stair-stepping uh, uh -huh. uh, through the photo editing world here. Uh, but, but a lot of great, uh, we had great reaction from each one of those products. for sure. a number of awards. Uh, and, and really, it, it came down to a decision of, you know, do we keep pushing each individual product forward? Right. And, uh, or, you know, which can, can get a little chaotic from a logistics and, and yeah. scheduling standpoint. Or, or do we refocus and, and build a product for really, truly everyone? Something that's got image correction tools built into it um, has, you know, obviously the filters and controls. Um, we're really well known for our one-click presets, which I hope to show you a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I'm really, I, I'm most excited about Luminar is, you know, from a from a sort of a software geek perspective, um, is that it seems to be a great platform. So it's it's almost infinitely expandable, and it is. So, so by that I mean where we have tools and controls, they fit logically, and you can add more to it whenever you want. And, and the user experience doesn't break down. With some tools, the more you add, the more you know monolithic it gets. Sure. Uh, I won't name any names, but I understand. Uh, but but I think with Luminar, we we've set out to design it so that that we can serve different audiences and different needs. Um, and I hope to show you that in a little bit. Okay, with respect to Luminar, is it also about file management? Well, that's a, that's a direction that, that we are heading. So uh, as, as many of the folks in the audience know, uh, you know there are uh, pro programs like Aperture which have been canceled, but people love uh, the photo management side. I think uh, a lot of folks who were using Aperture uh, uh, back in the day were less than enthusiastic about the editing side. We're experts on the editing. Yeah, and and people laud us for that. And in fact, when we're run, when our products are running as plugins inside of tools like Aperture hosts, I guess we call them, um, it's a nice it's a nice pair made in heaven. Okay, so let's talk about that. This software is standalone. Mm -hmm. Is it still available as plugin? Are there aspects to Luminar that are pluginable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and I wouldn't I wouldn't even call it aspects. The program itself, in its entirety, is plug-inable to hosts like Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, Elements, and uh, and there are even some folks who are are using it. Uh, uh, some programs will let you call external editors. Sure. And so we've heard from some customers who are having success doing that. So. It, it, assuming that this audience, which it largely is, uh, heavily focused on Photoshop. Mm. Um, then these people could see something like this and they don't have to say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to have, have to learn a whole new program. I can plug this into my Photoshop and I can learn it as I have time. Uh, there was that really cool thing that I saw, that cool demo, uh, no pressure, uh, but the cool <laughs> demo that I saw Kevin do on the grid that one time, I want to try that and that is going to be available to them through Photoshop. Through Photoshop, yeah. And I think one of the one of the niches that that indie software developers can bring to the market is is a way to accomplish things faster, sure. easier, more understandably. Where it might take you know 28 steps to do something, it might take two in our program. Uh -huh. So so those are places that you were finding niches. And I think in the case of, of, of Luminar and and uh, others of our software, there. The, 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 once you start to use the product, it's such a it's such a, uh, a satisfying experience. Yeah. You know. Oh well, that's that's a lot easier, and and we find people coming over, and at that point they go, well, for some amount of my work, I'm just going to use it as a standalone. We've got our own raw processor in the thing, so it's. Pretty so you're you're a raw processing engine as well mm -hmm. as yep. retouching and and uh, pre-programmed. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I guess, simple yeah. a- access to different types of yeah. improvement? Yeah, and, improvement? And, and all of our software products over the last few years have included these what we call one-click presets. Okay. A, lot of, a lot of products have presets, uh, but all of ours are made up of the functionality in the program itself. Okay. So you can click a preset, and then you can see the controls that were used to make that preset. And that's that helpful. Look, right? And now you go, oh, that's a little too blue. So you move a slider or, you okay. know, hey, I want to add another effect on top of that preset. So it's uh, it's pretty clever, pretty fun, to, pretty fun to use. And how long has Luminar itself been out? Oh, gosh, uh, about five weeks maybe, J- just before Thanksgiving wow. actually. Yeah. So, so not too long. Yeah, and, so uh, there's been a big push <laughs> lately. Well, yeah, two, two weeks uh, two weeks after we released the initial one, uh, we put out a new a new. Uh, a version of it that supports the touch bar. Uh, now I don't I don't have a Mac I'm, <laughs> I don't have a Mac touch bar. A, a sure. Computer, yeah, MacBook. Yeah, you got to talk to the boss about yeah, that. Get yeah. a new get a new um, laptop. But uh, um, but yeah, and and I'm I'm really excited to to say that within the next couple of days, every Luminar user is going to get a a new version of the software. It's going to even have more tools and features that and, is uh, that is a helpful good process with yeah. uh with software development yeah. companies when yeah. when you do those uh regular rollouts and and yeah. image improvements or program improvements yeah. um raymond has a question about luminar um i recently bought the program and i love it okay thank you did you put him up to that do you even know who raymond is <laughs> no, i don't um, i'm sorry but why do i need to activate it every time i start it up okay does it have to be activated no uh well uh Raymond, um, uh, once you put in your activation code, your product key, um, you shouldn't need to ever. Uh, uh, he shouldn't need to ever put that in again. I would recommend uh, emailing support at macfun.com, and I know that they'll take care of you. Very good. So yeah. there you go. It's not designed uh, to be tech, activated. Every tech, time. tech support, <laughs> right here live. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, all right. So uh, I do want to continue on with our other. Um, <clears throat> topics. So sure. I want to talk about the industry, and I want to talk about uh, Mac Fun. Of course, I want to do a demo. We have a, a break planned coming up fairly soon, and so right after the break is when we're going to get into some of these demos. Because I think if we did it now, we wouldn't have enough time to finish <laughs> the demo before we go into the break. So yeah. let's shift gears just a little bit, and I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about the industry. We have seen huge changes since since we've started into oh, yeah. the industry and, and even in the last five years where it's going and mm-hmm. you and I were talking before we went on the air here about how people can go buy a full kit, a really nice camera, a nice lens for sub 500 bucks, 600 oh, yeah. bucks, somewhere in that range yeah. and, and hang out a shingle and be a professional photographer. Mm-hmm. And the people that have been in the professional photography world for a bunch of years are pulling our hair out (laughs) because um, there are a lot of people that just got this camera from mom and dad. They just got their degree or um, diploma and they're out there trying to be or being professional photographers. Being asked by their friends maybe to to take images for the holiday photos or whatnot that might have otherwise gone to a guy who's been in the business for a while. Right. It's a it's a sea change I think. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where it's headed, but what I do know is that as a professional photographer, you have to do more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be aware. You have to, at one point, HDR was a new thing. Mm-hmm. At one point, printing to canvas was a new thing. Right. So we had all these things that were the new, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, the Joel Grimes look. I mean, there are just these, we see these evolutions, these waves come mm-hmm. through the industry. Mm-hmm. And... Um, one of the things that I see at this point is, as a professional photographer, you've got to learn processing your images faster and faster and faster, or have somebody in your studio who does that. And you've got to give them the tools. I remember, and and this is not in any way an ad for Photoshop World, it just really did happen. Uh, My brother is a graphic artist and has been for a lot of years. And he runs a, uh, the the marketing and graphic arts division of a company in Orlando, Florida. And I had, I don't work full time at Kelby One now, but I did a 10 year period where I worked at Kelby One, Mm -hmm. uh, Kelby Media. And so I started as the NAP director a little over 10 years ago. 
And I keep, I'm going twice a year. I'm going to Photoshop World. And I keep saying to my brother, you've got to come to Photoshop World. You'll learn so much stuff. Come to Photoshop World. And he's saying, yeah, the boss won't let me have time off. Mm. And the boss was the owner of the company. Wouldn't let him have the, the several days uh, to do that. And at one of, one of the points along the way, Photoshop World happened or, in Orlando. And that's where it's going to be this year ah. in April in Orlando. <clears throat> so he was finally able to get the days off. Right. And I got him in the door because I knew people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got him in the door. And what was so funny was he, he got all this great new information. He learned all this new stuff, techniques and tips. He learned from all the best in the industry. He went back to work and he was cranking out new looks, right. new designs, and doing it super fast. And his boss said one week after he got back from Photoshop World, he goes, when is the next Photoshop world? I want you to go again. You are so much more productive. That's You're coming good. up with all these great new ideas. Yeah. And I, I think we're, we're seeing that in, um, in the industry that that's not the exception. That's the rule. You've got to stay on top of the well, curve. Well, you've got to evolve, right? And, yeah. and so, you know, by going to trade shows, and certainly Photoshop World is a great place to learn. There's a, 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 a delightful vendor and exhibitor fair there where you can look at look at the latest print sure. you know, types. But, I mean, going to shows just uh, opens up my eyes every single time. I always see something new. And, and but, uh, but shows... you, you can tell the people who are, who are brand new to the shows, too. They're walking around <laughs> starry-eyed, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is an amazing stunned. thing, um, but but there. I guess what I'm getting at is whether it's shows or software that assists you by being a one-click wonder that you click and you get an effect, mm -hmm. or easier ways. Because we know that Photoshop and Lightroom can do HDR, but you guys have a product called Aurora HDR that is spectacular. Oh yeah, it's breathtaking yeah. for HDR. So you, you're looking for these faster, better. Uh, solutions, the things that inspire you, the things that get you to your answers yeah, quicker, yeah. and and get you the finished product well, and, faster, and, and give you great, you know, obviously great results. You know, uh, our HDR product is called Aurora HDR. Um, we just released a new version of it uh -huh. uh, in, I think it was uh, early October. So that was the product that we built uh, with uh, Trey Ratcliffe, who's one of the most renowned I've HDR heard of shooters Trey. out there. Uh, <laughs> he's much more than just a, an HDR shooter, but but certainly he's one of the most well-known and, and and I remember asking him early on well trade you know you have these great looks you you know that it's your style that you're known for why don't you walk me through the steps it takes you to uh -huh. make that image and it it, it took a, it took uh, at least four software programs different software programs and about 28 to 30 steps per image wow and, and I said we're going to build you a piece of software that's going to get you there faster. And, and, and Aurora's just been a runaway hit for us. Uh, it's, I think nothing new had been done in the HDR world right. uh, for probably five or six years. Yeah. And, and we came in sort of uh, looking at what was out there. Uh, I was obviously involved in other HDR uh, software in the past. And, um, and so we took all those lessons learned and all the experience from our team and, and the experience from Trey and put it all together into something that's super sweet. It is. It is amazing. And all of this stuff, I want to be able to uh, let our audience see some samples of what Luminar does, how it okay. works, and also Aurora HDR. And we have to take a break. So as soon as we come back from the break, I'm going to cut you loose and, and we're going to do some demos. Guys, keep the comments coming. <laughs> if you have questions, comments, uh, more than happy to answer those. And we will be back right after this brief break. Meet Max. Max is a flat tripod base that is compatible with most standard tripod ball heads and screws on easily without the need for tools. Max is the perfect companion for low angle photography and stability in unusual spaces. Don't be fooled by Max's slim frame. Max is made of aircraft grade aluminum and can support up to 300 pounds. If your tripod ball head can support it, so can Max. Max can be rigged up with your heaviest full-frame DSLR or video camera, long lenses, and bulky accessories. Versatile? For sure! You can mount Max or tie it to freestanding objects. Max is also compatible with quick-release devices to keep it attached at your hip, strap, or holster. Max comes with four spike feet and a removable fiberglass-reinforced nylon storage box. 
The spikes enable better grip on surfaces such as rocks, branches, and concrete. Max makes a great travel buddy, perfect for long adventures or challenging hikes. Max is a svelte 13 ounces and, at approximately 5 by 8 inches, can fit in almost any camera bag or backpack. Outdoor photographers will love the ability to place Max almost anywhere, including boulders and ledges for unique panoramic views or down low by the ocean to capture breaking waves. Macro photographers will be able to get close, really close. You can also set up time lapses or long exposures in no time. Max works well in cities too. Bring Max in your backpack along with a strap or zip ties and tie it to poles or fences. Max can balance on narrow ledges and tight spaces where tripods can't fit. You can also bring Max into museums and other spaces where the tripod police would otherwise turn you away. And in the studio, photographers can use a single Max base for their camera or multiple Max bases to create a portable studio setup. Rig up your Max with studio strobes and transceivers using a lighting stud on the accessory hole. Max can cast low-angle light on your subject or background and is easily kept out of the frame. If you do want to use a tripod while shooting, Max can be attached and removed easily between shots. Max can also be mounted to walls with nails for a more permanent solution, and it can be used to capture behind-the-scenes footage from a fixed location. The Platypod Pro Max was funded through a successful Kickstarter campaign. Now, it is available for immediate shipping to everyone. We know Max will be the most versatile tool in your gear bag. Welcome back, gang. You know, the Platypod, you saw the promo for the Platypod. This is actually really cool because we're giving away two of these <laughs> <Really>? today. Um, <laughs> we have a awesome. Platypod. This is like the kit. So this is the Platypod Pro. This was the original mm. Platypod that okay. the inventor Larry came up with. And then the Platypod Pro Max, you saw a promotional video of the Platypod Pro Max. This is the bigger one. And this one, I, I don't want to break the seal on it because we're giving it away. Let's see. Yeah. So, and normally on the grid, if you're watching last week, you saw Scott actually held up his Platypod Pro. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I use a, tr uh, a ball head like this, this open ball head. And because he uses that all the time. And the open ball head is a, a great little ball head. It's from our friends at uh, B and H. And what's nice about it is that it's uh, Arca Swiss ah. plate. So it's, uh -huh. it's very universally compatible. And so um, Scott was showing this last week on the grid. Yeah. And he shows his platypod. And, and I'm not going to hold it and show it. You, first of all, saw a commercial just now. But when Scott showed this, um, what he did was he was talking about, well, I always use it with this open ball head. Mm. And while that was on the air on the grid last week, Larry was actually already in negotiations with B&H to come up with this ball head paired with this platypod. Oh, right on. As an actual skew. And you just saw that on the B&H website. So yeah, you can actually go there right now and get the whole combo pack with the ball head and the quick release plate and the platypod pro max um all as one single product huh. and it was just kind well, of a coincidence that with, with the ball was, head too right that's a with great the ball that's head, a yeah. smoking price yeah so the and and that whole kit together with the ball head scott put it together himself but as he was showing off the way and we were talking about yeah. the way that he used it uh larry was talking with bnh they came up with the thing it's there on the site so you can go do a go to bnh website and do a search for platypod pro and you'll see the different offerings and one of those is that that kit with the open ball head that um scott kelby likes uses and recommends right. and so it's i think the gift giving time of year yeah and i think for yourself. i think if you do <laughs> buy one of those scott personally gets a kickback of like nine hundred and eighty four dollars and you know there is no <laughs> there is no scott kelby kickback at all uh if you get one of those it is exactly you the can same trust there. this guy <laughs> yeah um but but if you want to send me a five in the mail that'd be fine too so so that actually not this but this platypod pro and the Platypod Pro Max, each of those will be given away today on this very show. Wow. And I'm going to tell you how to win 
one of those things, because we're not going to give away both to the same person, we know that there are many, many happy viewers watching right now. We're going to give away a total of three things on today's show. This is thing number three. This is Scott's book, Scott's latest book, updated for Photoshop CS or CC the Photoshop CC book, <laughs> it's for the 2017 version of the software. So the Adobe Photoshop CC book for digital photographers, fully updated. Scott Kelby himself did this. All this right. just came out and I think this was, oh, they cheated. This is a fake cover. <laughs> Cause when, when, when we got this demo version of the yeah. book, um, it actually isn't in print yet. Well, it's out now. So yeah. you can actually, I think you can order it on Amazon now. Uh, but you could potentially win it today. Uh, watch till the end of the show, and I'll give you the web address that um, that we can tell you how to win one of these three things. All right, so let's, uh, cool. let's look at some of these comments. Um, do you want to take David Pickle's question? Sure. Hi, David. How are you? <laughs> That's the question in everybody's lip. D David asks, when will we see Windows versions of the Mac Fun products? Well, uh, I'm happy to report that, that we've got a Windows engineering team working on this stuff. Um, there, uh, and, and, you know, it, it's easy for me to say it's coming, it's coming, but it, it really is uh, being worked on, and we hope to have uh, some Windows versions out next year, hopefully mi middle, part of the, middle part of the year. Middle part of the year. That That is a good target. And that's more than I hear from a lot of software companies. It's really kind of funny. I, I love going to the show. Well, I'll show get a nasty gram here. I know, I know. <laughs> but but I, talk to, uh, I talk to my friends at Adobe, and uh, like Terry White will say, that's an interesting feature request. <laughs> and I'll say, well, Terry, are, are they working on it? I'm sure that they're aware that that, I mean, he's very, very cautious. I, I'll tell you the, the prime driver here, uh, at least on the Aurora side, is Trey himself. Oh, uh, yeah? You know, T Trey, uh, right off the bat, said, okay, this is working great for me on the Mac. How's it going to work for my all my Windows friends? Yeah. And so that, that was, a, that was a, a good motivation for us. So it is being worked on, and we hope to have it out as soon as we can. Okay. Uh, Tom Sheehan has a great question. You want to go ahead and tackle that sure. one? Sure. So Tom asks, I thought Aurora was a secret military project. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it may be. <laughs> but uh, in the follow-on question, are these Mac-only applications? Today they are. So Tom and David working on some Windows versions for you. And uh, believe me, uh, nobody would like to see that more than, more than me. Uh, yeah. Uh, that'll be Answer nice. it every, every, every time we give a demo. Um, <clears throat> Robin Owen is asking, I recently bought the Platypod Pro. Can't wait to try it out. So that's not actually a question I said Robin Owen is asking, but Robin Owen is stating, I recently bought a Platypod Pro. Yeah, they're very wow. cool. I got, I got a chance to use each of the Platypods, um, and I love being in the mix with the Platypod folks. When they come out with a new yeah. product, I get to test it and write up little reviews. And I, I wrote uh, the review for, for the Platypod Pro Max for Photoshop User Magazine. Oh, nice. So that was, that was fun. It looks like a surprisingly well-engineered piece of gear. Well, on the commercial they were showing, yeah. uh, I couldn't believe the, they had long lenses and a oh, yeah. big, big, even a bigger ball head than the than the one you were showing Yeah, we used, to, we used to put the really big lenses on the little Platypod and... Uh, you push our luck, uh, but yeah. So, uh, Raj, I hope you win one of these platypods also. So, thank you very much, Raj Gupta, for making that wonderful comment. All right, so let's jump in and, and show some of the demo stuff. I want to see um, Luminar, and okay. can can you show some of the highlights? Because if you go to MacFun.com, there are a bunch of videos there. Oh yeah, we've got dozens and dozens of videos. Okay, uh, so let Luminar. me tell you, I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hard time. It was hard to tell what you guys were doing on the videos. Okay. And and I'll tell you, uh, as as somebody that does the screen capture the screen, tutorials, screen okay. capture tutorials were nice as a demo, but they weren't educational. Mm, and okay. and I'll tell you the reason is because when um, when I'm doing a demo in software, I like to zoom in on the little things that are and you guys kept it full screen all the time right. so you can go watch some great videos and see this cool stuff that it can do but i didn't get as much learning out of it so that's what i'm hoping okay that, that well you i'll can, see if i can use that accessibility control and zoom in <laughs> no, on a few you things you know what here. it's not about, it's not so much about that if you're talking about it because in in some of the videos that i watched it was music so obviously it was oh, demo right, right yeah but but 
when you can zoom in and show what's going on, that's that's where I, I'm gathering more. So that's why I was really excited to have you here today Good. is because I want I want you to show Luminar and then also uh, discuss what it is that you're doing. What are you clicking on? How does this yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. So thing. I'll I'll try and uh, walk you through there. And, and, and now is that a Windows machine? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and, and for the record, we actually took the time to write a user manual for the software. Wow. So I'm, I'm super proud of that. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and just jump into it um, if we can uh, uh, I've got luminar running right now and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna so uh, as I st stated at the at the beginning of the show the the, the idea of luminar is it's going to appeal we hope to everybody from the brand new DSLR snapshot owner all the way up to the pros okay and so we'll just kind of start uh, uh, stair stepping through this so I'm going to pick an image that was actually given to me by a guy named Jack Fusco, he's a National Geographic photographer that we do some work with, and uh, it's a very it's a very simple image. I'll I'll expand the screen, um, and what I want to do is I want to just show off uh, the 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 interface here. We've got a nice simple clean toolbar up at the top. We've got some consistent tools on the right hand side. And I look at this image and I like it, but it's a little flat, you know, for the, the majesty and the silhouette of it all. So I'm going to go ahead and click this icon right here. This is our, um, our presets. And our presets are, uh, we've got over 50 of them in here. I can scan through them. Uh, they're also categorized. So, uh, and as you might see, I've got... How'd you I've, get to the category? Oh, by click. I'm sorry, by clicking on the circle right down here okay. at the bottom. Right now I'm in the basic category and okay. there's, a, there's a variety of... Okay. Uh, 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 if I click on the basic, I can now scroll through the, the different ones. I, I actually know what I want to do with this image. Uh, there's a fellow named Jim Nix who actually did a lot of our tutorials, and he was kind enough to give us a set of his presets for installation of the program. So I'm simply going to click on the preset, and it's going to give me a, a completely wow. different look. Now, the other thing that we do here is we put an amount slider on here. So if I want to kind of blend between those looks, it's very easy to just slide that slider back and forth. But now, I happen to did like that the replace strength. the sky, or is it enhancing what's there? No, it's there. enhancing what's there. So it's bringing out. This is a. De this is clearly a detail uh, a kind of a, a preset. Okay. And if I get rid of the presets window and hit the F key on my keyboard. You can see we're kind of going full in full screen, full screen here. Yeah. We'll kind of zoom in. Uh, hit the F key again, bring it back out. Uh, if we want to look at the before and after, there's the before, and there's the after. Cool. In one click, we've gone from something that's a great picture. I mean, I want to save it. I want to do something right. with it. To to something that's a little uh, so little, one click. Uh, more wow, dramatic, that's nice. Right. Okay. Okay. How do you get to that? That's the split screen icon. Yeah, this is the split okay. screen icon up at the okay, top. Cool. It's our before after slider, and when I click that off. It goes Very back. nice. So I, I just wanted to show show folks uh, and show you that you know w it's a very very simple, easy, approachable program. And and again, if you click this preset panel, w we could go through you know uh, literally dozens and dozens of these different variations on uh, on the presets. So pretty cool stuff. What I'll do now is um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and close this uh, file. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to show you another one. Uh, this is kind of a cool one, so I'll just kind of grab. Um, now this is a this is more of a more of a portrait setting, so I'll come in here. My my daughter's in high school, okay. So uh, so I'm I'm called upon to take pictures like this all the time. Okay, this is homecoming. But again, I want to uh, I want to say that from the from the preset side, you know, I might want to share this on Facebook or anything like that. I well, can, that's a nice starting image. It's a nice starting image. I could crop it a little bit if I want to. We've got some cropping and denoising tools, but I I just maybe I want a completely different look, a black and white, okay, fashion magazine kind of look. So in in one click. It's there, um, and everybody's looking good. And it's something that you know, people people like this stuff. Sure. One, one click, and you're and you're ready to rock and roll. The icons that I'm clicking up here in the in the upper left are are my plus and minus. That, those okay. are my zoom icons, and then this one will fit the screen. Now, are there are there like in Photoshop keyboard shortcuts that you could hold there down? There are. There are. So so you get into this, and you can memorize some keyboard shortcuts and get even faster. Oh yeah, you're super fast to, uh, once you get into it that way. Okay. So let me show you one uh, couple, one more picture, one or two more pictures. So this is one I took. Um, have you been to SeaWorld? I've been, yeah, we used to have well, annual passes when my son was younger. He's 22 oh now, boy. Uh -huh. but we used to go to SeaWorld all the time. 
Okay. So okay. yeah, been well, there a bunch. J- just to the north of SeaWorld, there's La Jolla, and this is an area. No, called... no, SeaWorld's in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, got it. you mean the other <laughs> the sea other world. one, yeah. The, the, the Pacific side the, one. Oh, yeah, no, never <laughs> no, been never there. Never been there. No. Well, th- there's an area of town called La Jolla, and, and um, uh, Ellen Browning Scripps, uh, if you've ever heard of the Scripps uh, Oceanographic uh, Institute, she she bequeathed this area of the coast uh, and built this seawall. Uh-huh. So we've got a lot of seals coming in, and it's a good place for people to, to, to swim. Yeah. And what I want to show you here on this image is I want to get more into a little bit more of the advanced uh, features of the, of the of Yeah, because this itself. looks like an image that I would shoot. Well, Where and that's the, why I want the, to show these kind of images. Because Larry is not a great <laughs> photographer, so it starts off. Yeah, guilty as it, it's It's really... It, this is what your camera captures. I mean, it's in focus, and the the horizon is level, and you have things. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's it's pretty well composed overall. I mean, rule rule of thirds and so forth, um, and you've got some nice blue going on. But it, this really needs something. Needs some work. Well, we're gonna turn we're gonna turn to luminar here, and the first thing I want to do is 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 do a little cropping. This stuff down in the bottom is killing me. I didn't see it in the, uh, you know, in, in the viewfinder itself. Sure. But it's super easy to just kind of crop that out. The other thing I might want to do is is uh, grab uh, our uh, uh, spot healing. Uh, okay. Brush our healing brush. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm using keyboard shortcuts to to make the the size of the brush. Uh, and there's some people down here in the in the bottom of the yeah that's the screen not showing, there that I don't like. It's not showing up real well on our screen, but okay. Well, I'll go ahead and hit uh, erase, and then uh, I'll go ahead and apply that once it's Man, done. Man, there are so many stuff. people I would love to erase. <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> Any of them in your life, or are they just uh, people no, you I, encounter on the I, street? <laughs> I refuse to answer on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. So there you go. We've taken we've taken care of some of the distracting elements, and this is this is part of the image correction side of, okay. of the application that I, that I wanted to get to. And now what I want to do, instead of going through the preset process, which I could certainly do, I'm going to click this icon up at the top. And this is our, um, our kind of our workspace and filters navigation. Okay. Right? We've got our histogram. If I click on this this button that I'm uh, cycling around right now, that's our histogram. These are our layers, and yes, we do have layers. Very good. And in fact, you you might notice that that the erased image layer was just created by me using that healing tool. So that's so cool. So you're not actually working on the base image; it automatically creates a new layer for you. That kind of, is kind of spectacular. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer here, real quick. And this is where uh, you start to get into some of the interesting uh, parts of, uh, of, the, of the software. So we've got all these filters here, and now I can simply add filters, and there's a lot of them. But I know, for example, that I want to I wanna saturate things. So I type in Satu down at the bottom, okay. and now I've got my saturation filter that I'm adding to a custom workspace. So uh, uh, hang with me here for a second. Okay. Um, so I've got this. I've got these workspaces now that um, that allow me to to sort of bring in only the tools that I want. And what would be really cool is if we had a way for you to create your own custom workspaces. Say you're an IR photographer, infrared. Sure. And and there's five or six filters that are your go-to filters. Sure. Uh, for that, you can create a custom workspace. And and if you notice up at the top, um, there is some. Uh, we, we've got a menu here. When I click on the workspace dropdown, the the menu shows that we've got black and white, landscape, uh, portrait, street, and then uh, again you can create any any number of workspaces that you want. So I'll come in here and I've got saturation and vibrant, so I'm just going to make it a little bit more vibrant. You you mentioned the blues earlier. I know we've got a polarizing filter in here, which sort of mimics your your polarizing sure. filter that you'd screw on the front of your lens. So I'm going to kind of crank that up. Okay, you, uh, see, you see the you see the image looking a lot better. Right yeah. Now. Okay. So uh, in just a couple of seconds, we've gone from something that you depicted as an image you might take, and it's just right out of camera, to something that's a lot more vibrant and interesting. Now, I noticed that that seawall is, uh, is a little dark in front. Maybe yeah. I want to add a little more texture there, <clears throat> but I'm comfortable with where the ocean is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to show you a brand new feature that, 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 that we're just completely excited about. I'm adding an adjustment layer here. 
And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm just going to bring in a, a toning filter. Now, the toning filter will let me, uh, let, let me uh, adjust the exposure pretty easily, but I'm not going to do that yet. What I'm going to go over here and do is I'm going to click on the brush. And when I click on the brush, you notice that the layer is selected. Okay. This is what every painting program out there does. Sure. It has layer masking. You might have, yeah. have taught a little bit about layer oh, yeah. masking in your day, right? Well, well the innovation... The, the innovation that, that, we're, uh, that we're bringing to, to Luminar is this thing that we call filter masking. So we come down here and with the brush selected, I'm clicking on the, on the tone filter, and now what I'm doing is I'm able, to, I'm able to selectively brush in, and now I'm just, you see that the mask right here, I'll just ex increase the exposure there a little bit, the mask is on the filter itself. Okay. okay. So that filter masking is is really cool and fun to fun to be able to use. I'm going to go ahead and switch off of this one and uh, and take any questions from you uh, that that you might <clears throat> that you might have. But I, 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 and I also want to wait for questions from our audience too. But I also have this list of other cool stuff that I want to talk okay. about. So I yeah, want sure. I want to get to a an HDR image or a series of a couple okay. HDR images, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Luminar and. Um, and how it, what we just saw okay. versus embedded into Photoshop. Okay. So what we just saw was the standalone application, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So how do you get to it when it's in Photoshop? It, well, like any other plugin, you, you would go to, you would open up your image. Right. And uh, uh, our installer will detect what hosts you have on your system. Sure. And it will say, hey, we see uh, Photoshop and we see Aperture on there. Uh -huh. Do you want to install? say yes, and then it'll automatically be in there. So in terms of accessing, uh, you just go up to the filter menu in Photoshop okay. and drag down to MacFun Software, and a little fly out will happen, and uh, the fly out will say Luminar or okay, great. Aurora. Or so, it, so it just shows up in the filter menu mm -hmm. after an install, after mm -hmm. an appropriate install. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I want to talk to you guys about a couple of cool things, and then I want to get to some of the comments that are starting to show up. but. One of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is an email that I got this week. It turns out... I did. Oh, okay. Uh, it turns out... Sorry, we just got a technical <laughs> briefing from Offset. Sorry about that. Nice. Uh, so we, uh, I, I got a cool email this week because I'm a Kelby One member. Duh. And if you're a Kelby One annual member, you need to go back and look at this because we get several emails from Kelby One. There are, there are a series of pretty cool things that, that I get from Kelby One in email. I get announcements of new classes coming out. I get um, uh, questionnaires. Every once in a while, they, they want to know what kinds of things do you guys want to learn about? What are some of the new things that are coming? And so, uh, you know, you, sometimes you're in a hurry and you're like, I don't want to do the questionnaire right now. Or, um, I, you know, I'll, I'll look at the uh, announcement out about Photoshop User Magazine later on. You don't always, although you should, if you're like me, you don't always just like race to the, uh, oh, well, what is it that, that's there? But this week, 12 days of Christmas is going on. Mm -hmm. And Kelby, Kelby One, for annual members, is doing this really cool thing where they're actually taking us through the 12 days of Christmas with a gift every single day. It's, it's the coolest thing. So right now, Kelby is in the middle of giveaways every single day leading up to Christmas that will total like $500 worth of stuff. Wow. It's, like, it's like stuff from Scott. It's um, Scott Kelby's Nick recipes. We've got... Um, print templates for Lightroom, hot tips guide was one of the things. And then there are, there are some other things that I'm not allowed to tell you about because it's going to be surprised. What, what fun is it opening up your present email if you uh, already know what's going to be inside? So there's, there's more stuff and it's coming from partners of Kelby One, all kinds of cool stuff. And all these things are being added into what is called the toolkit, the member toolkit. So when you go to the main Kelby One webpage, you'll see access to classes, you'll see access under a different link to discounts, but you'll see this thing called the toolkit. This is such a cool thing for annual members. So like if you're a monthly member, this is reason to become an annual member. 
is because of the cool stuff that's being added to the toolkit on a regular basis. I want to tell you a little bit more about it, but we have to take a break. I'm getting people waving at me off, uh, off screen saying, got to take a break, guys, right now. So I'm going to toss to the break. We'll be back right after this, and I'll tell you just a little bit more of the cool stuff that's coming in the 12 days of Christmas and in 2017. See you in a minute. I'm Amanda Powell, and I'm a wedding photographer out of Sarasota, Florida. One thing that captured my attention when I first discovered Kelby One's website was the array of professionals that they used to teach the photography. Each individual class was extremely organized. It was from start to finish. I feel comfortable with the photographers that they support. For me, it's a relationship. You establish them, and they last a lifetime. got an off-camera flash. You know what else I'll bet? I bet you're not in love with it. You've used it a couple of times. It didn't get the results you wanted. I want to help you. You know what I want to do? I want to make you fall in love with your flash and that's what this class is all about. It's called Just One Flash because everybody's got at least just one flash. We're going to go on location like we are here. We're going to be in the studio, but we're going to start off and I'm going to give you all the foundation. I'm going to give you shortcuts and give you the whole thing and it's right here exclusively at Kelby One. I am so happy we took that break because we have this really professional staff here and they didn't want to come on to set and tell us, hey, uh, you know what? While you were doing your demo, it froze. And so we didn't know until the commercial break that part of Kevin's demo froze. So I do want to go back and show you the end of that. So let's let's do that okay. now. Okay. So can you I'll bring jump. up the ocean picture? and uh, show yeah. the, the we'll, bring, we'll bring this up real quick. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it because I can also show you in another picture uh, some of the stuff. And, okay. and, and just to be clear, the, the, the network connection that, that displays the TV, uh, my computer to the TV was the part that froze. Okay. <laughs> I don't want anybody to right. um, Now, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna watch, yeah, it looks like it's, looks like it's working. Looking good. Yeah. Well, so for those of you who uh, we kind of got in the middle, um, that what I had done previously was, was to crop this and, and I won't bother to uh, to take out the, the the folks down. Oh man! Yeah, the cropping and the people mover yeah, worked. Yeah, that that worked really great. So uh, what I want to show you is right now we're, we're on our base layer, which we call layer zero. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, and what that does is it is it pops up my workspaces here, and so I've got this workspace uh, environment right now. And I'm just going to riff a little bit and look at the image and say, I want the ocean a little more blue. So I'm going to come in here, and I know that I have a polarizing filter, which is excellent. It mimics the kind of uh, uh, glass that you put on your uh, on your uh, on the front of your camera. But instead of just applying this this polarizing filter across the entire image, I'm actually going to going to show you one of the innovations of Luminar. It's the ability to add a filter. Uh, add, add a mask directly onto a filter. So I can come in here with my with my brush and I'm kind of brushing and you see over there on the um, right side of the, the filter name, you can see the mask I'm creating. Oh, right cool. Here, okay. So that's a filter mask. It's not a layer mask. Uh -huh. And now as I apply some of the polarizing uh, um, uh, the polarizing strength, you can see the the the, uh, the image is getting. So there's the mask I created, okay. and um, you can see uh, some of the uh, some of the effects there. I'm going to add one more filter, and I, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a toning filter, and I've still got my brush selected, and I want to just lighten the seawall just a little bit. I'll use my keyboard commands to just mask out, right? Just mask out the. Um, the seawall, and so you can see that mask right there that I've created, and now I can bring in my smart tone and my exposure. And one of the cool things here is I can also come in and I can copy that mask I just put on that filter. I'll add another filter, and let's bring in uh, some clarity. So here's the clarity. 
I say paste mask. Okay, so now you see the exact same mask that was okay. in. Okay. Okay. And now um, I can just simply apply some clarity to that. So as I, I know you're seeing it on my computer. Yeah, maybe it looks a little more so much there. better on your computer than it does on the on the broadcast. But yeah, so that's how we do it. And if we want to look at our befores and afters, we can turn the clarity off, and we can turn the uh, we can turn the toning off, and you can see how how that seawall has been affected. Sure. So it's gone from dark to light. So it's very, very quick and easy. Uh, uh, the filter masking, I think, ends up being way more intuitive for, for photographers. You simply look at the image and you go, what do I want to fix? Right. You bring in filters and you say, I want to fix that, that, that. And you can now mask it very easily on, uh, so, on a filter. So mode. I need to ask, what is the going rate for Luminar right now? Uh, 59 bucks. We've got a great holiday special yeah. going on. You get a bunch of different bonuses. Uh, we've got some ebooks. We've got a video. And this is kind of cool. We've got a video on how to shoot sandscapes. I saw that. Okay. And, and we think that that was just really cool. We hooked up with a, a photographer uh, in Dubai uh -huh. when there's they plenty of sand. sand. They have some sand there. Yeah. And he, he really did a marvelous uh, job. Not only, not only sort of telling you about the camera side of it, but also some of the preparation it takes yeah. to, to go out and shoot in those sort of conditions. Uh, so that's, really, really fun group of bonuses. That's something I haven't shot time. very much at all is, mm -hmm. uh, is sand or sandscape. And I've got to imagine that shooting sand, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm picturing in my head, what if I have a noisy image of sand? Oh, <laughs> that's gotta be the worst. So. Well, I yeah. want to show you, uh, just to close up on Luminar, if you don't mind, I'd like to show you um, kind of a cool, really cool feature, sexy feature. Okay. And it deals uh, predominantly with um, with the ability to bring in additional images and, and okay. work, with, work with multiple images on multiple layers. This is a, this is a shot of a bridge in, in Austin. It was done by our, our good friend, uh, Jim Nix. And, and, and all I want to show you here is... Uh, oh yeah, all I want to show you here is how to replace the bloody sky. <laughs> okay. Right? So you're going, you're scratching your head there a little bit, but we'll go into new image layer, and this is a this is a kind of a fun. Uh, so we'll come in here, and now what I'm doing is I'm I'm looking for the image this of this night sky, right? So I want to take that, and I want to go from a cloudy sky to a night sky. Okay. So now you go, well, it just overlaid it by 100%. So a lot of the Photoshop crowd will go, oh, I'll use a blend mode, or I'll right. paint a mask in. And you can do that here. We've got an easier way. We call it adding a gradient mask, right? So now as I'm adding that gradient, you can see it's just going oh, yeah. into right where I want it. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And again, you know, for, uh, sky replacement is really kind of a popular topic these days. Sure. I'll go into our transform tool and I'll maybe just kind of squish it up a little bit there. Okay, so you're getting the perspective of the mm -hmm. other image of the sky to exactly. match the perspective of this sky image. Exactly, using the transform tools. So uh, when, once I've got it to where I like it, I just simply say apply. And um, and we've you can see this night sky is the is the uh, it was the name of the file that right. I chose. So there's the before, and there's the after, before and after. And it, it's really a fun. Can you do the split screen thing? Oh, and sure. Drag that yeah, across absolutely. again. Absolutely, that's a great. Uh, thing. That's so cool. So right there, you. I think that just, by itself is is very helpful. Yeah, it's, and super easy. I mean, there, there's no hocus pocus going on. It was. I'm just, just talking about the split screen feature. I oh, like that. Okay, <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, and I'll just kind of close out by saying, if you it, everything that we do here uh, is also being recorded as, as a historical step. Okay. So the cool thing is, if I wanted to go all the way back to just bringing in the night sky, or imagine, uh, you know, where where you've applied a preset, made a bunch of tweaks to it, and you kind of find yourself down a path right. that you don't want to be on, yeah. just crawl back. So that kind of non-destructive editing is uh, is very very fun. Cool. Uh, so that's a little bit about Luminar. We're super excited about it. We've seen uh, very very simple one-click presets. Right. We've seen more moderate sort of okay filter painting I get that and then we've seen kind of the dramatic uh, uh, I know we're kind of crunched up against the the top of the clock and we're gonna go a little bit over but um, I, I would love to have people see some of what Aurora HDR is about. okay okay so can we can we step down that path sure. because let's uh, you want to grab a couple of questions yeah, while I'm bringing that. that up you are an excellent show host by the way <laughs> Kevin thank you very much let's I, I do my best <laughs> let's look at some of these questions um, 
Bruno Santos, Bruno Miguel Santos says Luminar is a one-step shop. Thank you, Bruno. Yeah, it would appear, and it helps if you have somebody named Kevin running it. Um, Carl, let's see, instead of switching to Photoshop all the time, Luminar does it in one software. Yeah, and, and that's, mm. that's true, and I also like that when I'm in Photoshop, in my comfort zone, mm. that I can step into Luminar and tinker for a little while. And see, that's, that's one of those, those nice things that I don't have to leave Photoshop where I work all the time, where I'm comfortable yeah. and familiar. Yeah, that's a, that, yeah. I talk to people about that all the time. Um, I don't know if your experience is the same way because you're kind of a Photoshop guru. I'm not. But I find myself in Photoshop when I'm looking at an image and, that I want to do something with. I kind of tend to travel on one path because yeah. I want to get to that end point. The, I think the absolutely magical stuff about our software is that you can, uh, once you invoke it, you can try 50 different looks. Yeah. And you, you might not even know that you want to do a black and white or a desaturated Joel Grimes kind of look or you want a really gritty thing over here or something moody and dreamy. Y you might not even think intuitively uh, or innately about that right. uh, until you get in there and you see all the presets and, and you just kind of well, click away. I, find nothing, your path. nothing against Photoshop, but I'm kind of bored of, of some of the filters. Mm -hmm. I do like going into the filters and clicking and, yeah. and seeing what I get and yeah, moving a little bit of sliders here and there. But then to see the, the goal of creating so many more different options mm -hmm. in the one-click solution uh, and for fifty nine dollars to add this to to the mix yeah. is a is a great way to go. So. Seems seems like it. Um, I'm looking at a couple of others. Car Carl, uh, I noticed you you asked a question about does Luminar help stitch uh, uh, images together to create a pano. Um, and how many photos can it handle? We really don't do panel stitching. It, it is on the wish list. Uh, every piece of feedback I get, I put in a shared doc and send a little note out to the lead engineer and our CTO. Mm -hmm. and, and I say, hey, people are asking about this. And so that's not the first time we've heard about panel stitching. I, I suspect we'll, we'll take a close look at but that. But people could stitch in Photoshop mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and then open um, Luminar through their or, or you can shoot a pano on your iPhone, uh, have it sync to your Photos for Mac application, and then run Luminar right within Photos. Oh, you, so Luminar runs within Photos, not just inside Photoshop. Oh, yeah. Runs, yeah, it runs, runs Photos for Mac, Aperture, Lightroom, Photoshop. Very cool. Yeah, we try to play wherever you, you want to I am absolutely <laughs> not a Photos for Mac fan. I am a Mac fan. I take pictures I'm with sorry my I iPhone, it up. but I just, man, <laughs> hey, Apple uh, is, is not my friend with their, with their software applications. But that's just me. I'm not, I'm not going to say too much. So I'm just going to bring up uh, three images within our Aurora application. And you can see we see the different uh, exposure brackets sure. uh, here. And, uh, you know, I these know that... These are unretouched. At these point. are unretouched. Uh, so you see one that's minus two, minus three, and plus two. Uh, Trey sent us uh, these. Um, I know we shot on a, tr on a tripod, so I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, uh, Create HDR. And you'll see an interface that looks uh, surprisingly... <laughs> consistent with our, our Luminar model. Yes. Right? Uh, it's clean. It's uh, We're going through a tone mapping process. I'll just kind of expand that up. So you can see right off the bat what we've done is uh, we've, we've tried to uh, create a, a, a merging of those three files right. to create something very, very realistic. That's one of the big knocks on HDR is that, oh, yeah, it always looks overcooked or, you know, too dramatic. And, sure. and that's certainly uh, some people's style. But, uh, but what we try to do is, is present uh, folks with a, a pretty this realistic is, this look. This is a right lot like bat. what the human eye would see. This mm -hmm. is a lot yeah. like, because cameras just can't capture what the human eye sees, and HDR gives us that opportunity to get that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, the tools in, in, in Aurora are, are very straightforward. We've, um, you know, we've got a layers palette, including a way to create luminosity masks based on tonal values based on the zone system. Okay. Okay, so if you can see that up in the hang on, you're gonna you're gonna ask me to, to do this, right? <laughs> there we go. No, I, I heard your explanation. I get it. Uh, and then we've got our tools. So you've got tone mapping, you you can adjust the color temperature, maybe you want to cool that down a little bit. Um, we can certainly 
bring up the vibrance. Structure allows us to to put a little bit more detail and clarity into that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and and I, I, I don't want to go, you know, mess with the picture too much here because I really like the realistic look yeah. here. But we've got a denoising function. Image radiance is kind of cool. And you can do denoise after you combine the image. Yeah, we've done it, uh, if yeah. I was to invoke it here. Uh, image radiance is kind of cool. This was one that that's a, a Trey's a big fan of. It kind of uh, tends to to make everything glowy. Okay. Right? And uh, we've got a polarizing filter. Um, top and bottom adjustment's kind of cool. So I can adjust the exposure, contrast, vibrance, and warmth based on uh, uh, the top and the bottom of the picture. So if I want to darken the exposure, are sort of at the top, brighten up the bottom a little bit. I can certainly do that. That's interesting. Yeah, and and as I as I shift it up or down, you can see you, you can see that 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 horizon line of where the blends. Oh, okay. go. okay. So yeah. So if so I make it if I make okay. it really crazy, you know, you can see where it where it goes. All right. So there's Very the cool. top kind of going back and forth. And how much is Aurora? So Aurora uh, uh, normally retails for 99. I think we've got it on holiday special right now for 89 as well, and there are some bonuses there too. Okay, so uh, check out AuroraHDR.com. Okay. Okay. Aurora HDR, and uh, so Luminar is 59 right now. Correct. Yeah. Aurora. Now, does Aurora also function as a plug-in into other? It does. Um, and in in Lightroom and Aperture, uh, we're we're able to take in multiple images. Okay. Uh, and blend them in Photoshop and Photos. The architectures um, pretty much relegate us to a single image editing. But, oh, I see. But I'll tell you, you know, some of our stats coming off the program are that uh, 70 plus people percent uh, of the users of Aurora use it for single image editing. Interesting. Which I was blown away by. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think people were just kind of going back through their back well, catalog. So, so down that down that path, um, I have done some HDR work with a single camera raw image. Okay. So I'm, I actually have more in, information in my image than I can see because it's a camera raw file. Correct. Is that available? Well, we do bring in raw files uh, okay. here. Uh, we've got the same raw processing engine uh, in between Aurora and Luminar, so you're you're absolutely able to do that. Okay, uh, so that makes well. sense. Yeah. If if I there are certain circumstances where I haven't taken multiple exposures, I just have a single exposure, yeah. but I have a lot of. But you have a raw file. But I have a raw file, so yeah. I have a lot of range with that, and this is a nice way to be. A, what I used to do is I used to look at them and then save them out at multiple exposures. Got it. And then blend those. Okay. But it looks like I can just go at it. Run and gun. Yeah, with the one. Yeah. With the one. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Tom Sheehan says, rain check for the PC version. Yes, rain <laughs> check for the PC version. I'm, I'm thinking we might come back and, and do another episode or, or a remote interview or something <laughs> there we like go. that. Uh, Eric Langley is actually telling an untruth. Eric actually says awesome show today Larry uh, so Eric thank you your check is in the mail um, and Jason Teal says very cool been on the fence about this since it came out oh, so it's time to jump over the fence and uh, into the holiday purchase spirit yeah. and you know all this stuff we're, we're coming into the holiday season we're buying lots of gifts for lots of people and the great thing is Kelby One is also giving gifts we're going to give you guys gifts platypod pro platypod pro max scott's um adobe photoshop cc book for digital photographer 2017 right here and uh yeah so we'll do that um in just mere moments i want to make sure that i got through my my little checklist um okay so i know we were supposed to have one more break do we have another break or no no more breaks? Okay, we're not going to take another break. We're going to actually do our show close and wrap it up. So, Kevin, people can find out about Luminar at? Well, macfun.com slash Luminar. I've got it up okay. on the screen Okay, and make here. sure you understand some... it's spelled Mac, P-H-U-N, yes. Macfun. Yes, Macfun. Dot com. Mm -hmm. And there's our holiday sale here that we've uh, that we've put together. And, uh, well, again, the, the tutorials, as you, as you said, uh, uh, Larry, they're, they're right down here. I mean, we've got tons of tools and features into this thing. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. Um, and so easy to use.
Yeah, right? it, it, it absolutely is. Very cool software. Thank you so much for taking the time to show you us bet. this. Hey, thanks for having and, me. And it's been cool to kind of um, more kind of off camera stuff. Kevin and I have been catching up just a little bit and been doing this stuff mm. in the industry for a lot of years. And uh, while I did kind of want to go down the path of what are people doing these days and how can they improve, y you guys might have even seen, I had a commercial in uh, one of the commercial breaks because I'm going down the path of how can we help uh, professional photographers make more money. Oh, cool. Uh, you guys do that by having a piece of software that helps them do their work faster. Mm -hmm. And I'm helping people in uh, professional photographers anyway in their professional photography business by adding something to their portrait business business. Uh, specifically, I teach how to do the easiest, easiest in the world and very profitable kind of video. So oh, adding okay. simple video into your uh, uh, otherwise still portrait business. So that's what that thing was about. And you can find out more about that at LarryBecker.tv. Just go to LarryBecker.tv and click the banner at the way top. But um, I also want to remind you, the 12 days of Christmas as a Kelby One annual member, cool thing. The great thing is, if you are a Kelby One annual member, you're getting these emails regularly. If you miss the emails, don't worry about it. Go to your Kelby One sign-in page. Go to the main membership uh, navigation page in the website, and you can actually go to the toolkit and see all these cool things, and there are gonna be more added all the time. And it doesn't stop at the end of the year. This is something that's a new thing, but it's an ongoing thing. So you'll find that in January, there are gonna be more things added to the toolkit. In February, there are gonna be more things added to the toolkit the cool kit I almost cool said, kit yeah, yeah I like that I mean. actually okay. so more <laughs> things added to the Kelby one toolkit so there is absolutely a reason to go from being that month to month member to being the annual member gift it to yourself or to a loved one same thing with Photoshop world we're gonna be at Photoshop world uh, this coming April in Orlando, April, I think it's 22nd, 23rd, 24th, mm -hmm. or 2123. I think it's 2234. It's in the 20s. Yeah, so it's in the 20s in Orlando in April. So we will see you guys at Photoshop World. And it is time to tell you how you might be one of our three big winners today. You want to go to kelby1.com. This is, this is challenging, so go ahead and write it down. kelby1.com slash contest. And that is all you have to do. You will see this form that you can fill out. You do have to click the little CAPTCHA thing to prove that you're not a robot because we don't want to give <laughs> the P Platypod Pro Max to a robot. Uh, but definitely go there hmm. to kelby1.com slash contest. And uh, you might be one of our three big winners this week. I see absolutely no more questions from our uh, audience at this time kevin let's wrap it up so you can get back to where it's really really cold where are you flying back to <laughs> no i'm flying back to san diego oh tomorrow. san diego that's yeah nothing. it's yeah. a dry heat yeah san diego is <laughs> san diego if if i didn't live in florida san diego is where i would want to live yeah. i love it there you know I, I went there after college and uh, it's like a black hole. Every time you try to escape, it brings you back. It's it's a great place. Yeah. Well, and I love living in Florida. It's really yeah. great here. I was actually uh, born in Florida. Were you? Yeah. Homestead Air Force Base. You were born at an Air Force Base. Okay. Yeah. The one that Hurricane Hugo, was it? Uh, I wasn't around wiped at out. the time. Yeah, <laughs> so I my hometown yeah. in the hospital is no longer standing. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> Not that I'm, I'm, I'm glad you made it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad you made it to Florida to join us on the grid. Well, Guys, thank you. thank you so much to uh, for coming in today. We appreciate it. And uh, come back next week and watch The Grid Live when actual professionals will be hosting the show. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try and come back. I've got uh, classes planned for Kelby One. I've got some classes that have come out on Kelby One. Uh, I just love hanging out here, but I'm doing my own stuff too. So thank you guys for coming in and joining us as Scott is finishing up his final tour date in wow. Texas. He'll be back. I think Scott's back next week. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Kevin, okay. Mac Fun. Yeah. Mac P H U N. Thanks a lot, guys. See you guys. Thanks for coming in. Bye. Done with the grid. <laughs>